Good morning, everyone. Welcome back here at ECMI TV, brought live to you from the exhibition hall here at the Bella Center in Copenhagen, Denmark. My name is Judith Cohen. I am your ECMI TV host, and we are starting off day number four of the 33rd ECMID. Um, and what a start do we have? We have our next guests already lined up here in our studio with us. Uh, no less than keynote lecturer, uh, Professor Christine moisel Eichinger. A warm no. welcome to you, Christine. We're Thank very you. happy to have you. You are a professor on interactive microbiome research uh, at the University of Graz mm -hmm. in Austria. Mm -hmm. um, and you held your keynote lecture uh, yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, on the role of the archaeome, which is, I think, an underrepresented um, <laughs> area within uh, clinical microbiology, um, and therefore struck a lot of interest uh, from a, an, a great number of attendees. Mm -hmm. um, would you care to share with us a little bit more about uh, the topic, the archaeome, because not everyone will be familiar with it, what is an archaeome? <laughs> an archaeome is actually the community of all the archaea in our body, so to say. Yeah. And archaea are kind of, they are different to bacteria, so they look like bacteria, but they are not. And the interesting thing is that they have a completely different biology, so they behave differently, they have different molecular mechanism, and for me, most intriguing is that they are not pathogenic, so there's not a single pathogen that has ever been found on these, in these archaea. But they are in our body. They exist to, in numbers of up to 7 8% in certain people, in the gut, for instance. But they obviously do no harm, which is super interesting. So does that mean if they're not pathogenic that they're not involved in disease at all? Or well, they could be. There's open question marks, I have to say, because they are little helpers for the bacteria. So in the gut, for instance, they help to break down all the food that we, we eat. So the bacteria do yep. degrade the big stuff, so to say, and then you have these little compounds like CO2, hydrogen is formed, acetate, formate, and this is what these archaea, the methanogens, are taking, and they produce methane out of it. Okay. And they sometimes do it in a good way, usually in the gut, but sometimes they help also pathogens. For instance, when we have periodontitis, they support the pathogens there to be more efficient in oh. their bad stuff. Okay, so they're not good guys all, not all over. Not always good guys. No. <laughs> um, so they look like bacteria. Yeah. Um, how, how and when did, did people discover that this is a completely different group of um, microorganisms? Well, it started more or less in the 70s, and uh, these archaea have already been known, uh, but they were judged to be bacteria. So we see a lot of archaea that have still bacteria in their name, like Methanobrevibacter. Yeah. So you hear the name of the bacteria yeah. here. And in the 70s, they were described as a uh, distinct uh, domain of life, and since then, it was clear that they are completely different and more understanding came up, but not much understanding for the human archaeum, to be yeah. honest. We have known that there are these methanogens for quite a while, since the 80s, but studies did not go further and people were not interested due to their non-pathogenic nature, more or less. Yeah. So, so how did archaeome cross your path? How did you <laughs> get into the research on this, uh, on this specific topic? Well, I'm a uh, microbial ecologist by training, so oh. I started to work with archaea in the environment, ah. in the cold springs and that stuff. Yeah. And I always was fascinated because these archaea are kind of existing in all the ecosystems all over. And I always thought, well, they should also play a, a role in the human microbiome. There's so many bacteria, fungi and whatever. And why not archaea? And then I started to look uh, for archaea on skin. This was the first starting point which proved very difficult because the skin microbiome is very difficult to work with. Yeah. And then I also focused on the gastrointestinal tract, on the lungs, the mouth, and so on. We discovered archaea all over the places, yeah. and it opened a new path of, of research. And are there, are there uh, specific regions in the body that, that archaea are more prevalent or more present than yeah. others? They mostly prefer the gut. Okay. And also yeah. there we have two types of, of people. So we have archaea carriers, which have high amounts of archaea. So I name them usually the human cows, because they really carry these methanogens, and they yeah. also breathe the methane, so you can okay. measure this. In breath condensate, and or uh, can, you, can you pick it up with breath condensate? 
Excuse me? Oh, with the exhaled breath condensate, you can pick it up? Yeah, you can find okay, it. Okay, wow. Uh, you can distinguish yeah. those people, and they also have a different physiology, so to say. They have a different microbiome. They also produce more of these short-chain fatty acids, and they usually deal better with the fiber breakdown. So if you're a vegetarian, uh, the likelihood that you're a methane-producing person is higher. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, are you already at the point that, that you're about to discover like certain phenotypical um, mm -hmm. archaeoma types uh, of people? Yeah, indeed. We did this yeah. study with these uh, young people from Graz. So we analyzed 100 people and uh, almost 20 of them were these methane producing people. Yeah. And they definitely had different physiology we, which we could nicely see. So increasing of these short chain fatty acids in their guts. Okay. And uh, better dealing with vitamin shortage and so on. So it's uh, really big So you can, you can see like differences within their health status. Yeah. Are there already associations with disease as well or? better with the health, I have to say, because yeah. we see if the people are a methanogen carrier, they go with a lower BMI in general, and it also comes with uh, better health and longevity even. So okay. this is kind of also shown in a lot of other uh, papers already. So most archaea are rather on the good side. Wow. Some archaea are also very interesting. They trigger our immune system also. They they might also protect us from asthma because they trigger yeah. the immune system really early in our lives. And this could be protective for asthma even. Okay. So it's, they're rather on the good side as we know, unless they help the bacteria. This is another story. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there were a lot of people uh, attending your keynote yeah. lecture. And um, I, I, I heard you mention that there was also a lot of discussion. Yes. What were the most, um, could, could you mention a number of discussion points that were brought up? What were questions that people oh, had? So many, so many. So it started basically from the, from the method, methodology, so how how you can detect archaea, yeah. because as I mentioned, they are different from bacteria, yeah. and it's difficult to also address them with the bacteria-centric okay. methods that we are using. So we have to think about the correct DNA extraction method and how to assess the sequences that we uh, derive from next generation sequencing, all that stuff. So these were a lot of questions, but also, of course, um, like the interplay with the immune system raised also yeah. a lot of interest and how this actually works, but I didn't have much answers to that. So that was yeah, the yeah. frustrating part. So that's probably from the doctors uh, <laughs> yeah. in, uh, in the, in yeah, the, in the room trying to find the association <laughs> or the cross-link with yeah. disease. Exactly. Oh, that's so interesting. So um, um, you did the keynote lecture on yesterday. Um, have you been involved in other uh, sessions as well uh, this year at ECMID? No, actually not really, because I just came in yesterday. So, oh, but I will be chairing a session today, so I will okay. be. Okay, and which session is that? On the uh, intercellular pathogens. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, you're, you'll be chairing it. Yeah, yeah. What do you hope the outcome will be from that? Uh, Fruitful discussions, as Fruitful always. Fruitful discussions. And new collaborations, always. <laughs> always. Well, that's excellent. Well, th thank you so much for coming here into our TV studio and giving just a little bit more information on uh, the keynote lecture. I, I, I'm imagining this will serve as a teaser for everyone uh, to uh, look up your lecture in, in the on-demand platform setting um, in a couple of months. So um, people can watch it and learn more about the archaeoma, which is is really an upcoming uh, or rising star, I think, within <laughs> the clinical microbiology. Thank you, Christine, for, so much uh, for your effort. Me. Thank you. And thank you, viewers, for watching us. Again, we'll take a short break, but we will be back at the clock of 10 when we will be um, inviting two executive committee ESCMID members. Um, the professional affairs officer and the publication and communication and guidelines officer. So uh, join me at 10 o'clock so we can dive in a little bit deeper into those roles within the ESCMID uh, society. Hope to see you at 10.